Hey everyone, Professor Hank here. So today we're gonna to talk about overloading relational operators in C++. And these are the operators that allow you to do comparisons of one object to another. So, you know, doing something like less than equals to, you know, those kind of guys. So we're gonna find that these are probably the easiest operators to overload in C++ for your classes. And they all follow the same pattern that we've been seeing so far. That is, you've got that operator keyword, and then you have the operator, and then you write a function that you add your class that has the logic in it defined for whatever you need it to be. So you're going to determine, you know, what it means to be less than or equal to for your object for whatever your particular application is. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look by writing a sample class. So I'll go ahead and create a class that we'll call square. And class square will simply have a private double variable and we'll call that side. And then as part of our public interface, we'll go ahead and create a uh, constructor and pass it a single argument or no argument at all. We'll use default arguments here. So we'll do something like, you know, int uh, x equals zero. And then we'll use that little initialization list thing where we'll say side and we'll pass it the x. And then we'll have ourselves an accessor here. And that's just simply going to return the side. So we'll say get side. And then we'll have another accessor. It'll be a function that's going to calculate the area of the square. So we'll do something like double get area. And that'll just return side times side. So for this example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to define, I have to think about what, what does it mean for one square to be less than another or equal to another. You have to decide that and define that for whatever, like I said, whatever your application is. So for us, for me, I think what I'll do is I'll make one square less than another square if its area is less. So we'll compare squares based off of the calculated area. So we want to be able to create a couple of squares. So maybe square A, which has a side of five and square B, which has a side of six. And I want to be able to write some expressions that look like this. So A less than B, you know, or A less than equal to B or A equals equals B. This is, this is what we're trying to do here All right now. This is a binary operator. And so it's going to behave as, like I said, we've seen before, we're going to have a, which is our left-hand side and B, which is the right-hand side of this binary operator. So a less than B is the same thing as typing a dot operator less than and passing B as an argument. So here a, the a object is going to have its operator less than function called and B is going to be passed as an argument. So this is going to be our guide to writing our function for the operator less than for class square. So if we take a look at that, we know that we're gonna to have to have a function named operator less than. We know it's gonna to have to return something. Well, what's it gonna to have to return? We're not assigning anything here. Okay, what we have to return because we want this to be able to be evaluated as part of a test expression, we need it to return a Boolean value, true or false. Okay, because A is less than B or it's not. So that'll cover our return type. Now, what do we need as a parameter? Well, take a look again here, line 22. What are we passing as an argument to the function? We're passing another square. B is type square. So that's gonna tell us what our parameter should be here. So it's gonna be square, and we're gonna pass by a reference for efficiency, and we're gonna make it const because operator less than is just comparing the area of the left-hand side versus the right-hand side. So since it's only doing comparison, it has no business being able to change the argument. So the right-hand side should not be changeable by the left-hand side. So that's why we're making this constant. And this is just gonna be an accessor. It's not gonna be able to change the left-hand side. So we're gonna make that const. So let's go ahead then and define this function. And you're gonna see that it's gonna be super easy, barely an inconvenience. So scroll down here and we'll go ahead and make our function body. This is going to be part of the square class and we have to name our parameter. We'll name it RHS for right hand side. So what I'm doing is I'm comparing the area of the left hand side, the area of the object who's calling the function. And I'm going to compare that against the area of the right hand side. So we'll say right hand side dot get area. So that's going to give us a true or a false based on the calculated area as calculated by our get area function, right? But we're not done yet. We have to return something. 
what are we going to return? Well, I just need to return true or false. Well, what does this evaluate right here? What does that evaluate to? True or false. So I'll just return that. And that's all that I need to do. And we're done. So let's go ahead and test this less than then. And we'll just come up here in our main. We'll say if A is less than B, we'll say C out A uh, less than B. And if it's not, then we'll say uh, else C out A is not less than B. And so let's test it. So should this evaluate the true? Yes, it should, because A contains five. And five squared, as reported by the get area function, is going to be 25. And then the B object has got six. So six squared, as reported by the get area function, is going to be 36. So this is going to return true. So this is going to return true. And then we're going to see A is less than B. So let's check that out. Okay, A is less than B. And that is the basics of it. And basically you just overload all of the different relational operators as you need them. Now at a bare minimum, probably want to implement at least two less than and equals with the less than and then equals, you can emulate the rest. So let's do equals equals. So equals right there. So all we're going to do, and again, like I said, super easy. We're just going to control C control V and we're going to change the operators and that's it. So then we'll be able to test by doing something like this. You know, we'll go ahead and do sign them both 20 and then we'll say um, equals equals, right? And then we'll be able to say is equal to B or is not equal to equal to B. Okay, so then let's go ahead and run that. It should say that they are equal because the areas are both the same, you know? And then we can test it to make sure that it works in other scenarios as well. You should always test for multiple cases, okay, A is not equal to B because 19 squared is not equal to 20 squared. And um, we can do one more. You know, this is also going to say that's not equal to B because 19 squared is not equal to 18 squared. So yeah, so it works. And so, you know, I made the claim that these are the only two operators that you absolutely have to have. I mean, you can emulate all the rest of the operators, right? So greater than, um, greater than or equal to, not equal to, and so forth. And you might be thinking, well, how can you do that? What are you talking about? Well, let me give you an example. Okay, so if A equals equals B, I didn't overload not equals, but I don't have to because I can just use the not like this. So I could say if not A equals B. So then I can do something like C out you know, they are not the same. And that's what you're going to see here. That's going to evaluate the true because they're not the same, you know, because a equals equals B is going to return false, but then that not is going to flip that false to true. And so then that's going to execute right there. So we're able to do not equals to, if we wanted to see if B was less than a, then all we have to do is flip the order that we're evaluating, right? So we can just say B less than a. Okay, we don't have to create a separate greater than here. We can we can do this and it's going to work just fine. So let's go ahead and check that out. Is B less than A? And that's going to be true because 18 squared is less than 19 squared. But now you might be looking at that going, well, what if it's, what do you mean? You don't, how are you possibly going to emulate less than or equal to? You didn't overload this. So you see the red squiggle? How, is, how are you going to do that? What did we just say? Is it less than or equal to? So I can do something like this. I can say, well, is B less than A or equal to? See how that game is played? So now I can say, oh yeah, see how B is less than or equal to A. And so I can run this and you can see, yeah, it's true. B is less than or equal to A. And it's true because this part right here is true. But if I made them the same, then it's still going to evaluate the true because of that second expression, that second sub expression, B is equal to A in this case. So at the very minimum, you need these guys and you can do whatever comparison you want, but you can explicitly define all of them if you like to, right? So I could do less than or equal to, for example, and I'll go ahead and completely and utterly explicitly define that. So what am I going to do? I'm going to do the same kind of thing that I did before. Just going to change that operator to less than or equal to. I'm going to change this operator to less than or equal to. Now I can use that operator in my test expression. So then I can say, oh, well, less than or equal to. Right? So less than equal to. And then uh, it's going to work just fine. So, you know, all of these operators, these relational operators follow this pattern, right? So we can 
explicitly overload greater than less than um, equals to not equals to greater than equals to less than equals to fine and they're all going to have a similar kind of pattern you're returning a bool because that's what these operators do for primitives that are evaluate the true or false you know you're going to be evaluating you know one object against another so you're going to be passing itself basically as an argument and that's it you have to decide i mean the only real complicated part about this the only real challenging part is deciding what it means for one square to be less than another so i could have changed this to maybe define it to where instead of an area i say oh well i, I want compare the sides against each other that's that's what i want to do i mean it's going to depend on the project that you're working on what the requirements are requirements are king that's where you go and get all of your clues as to how you should code something you begin with the requirements so there you go now you know how to overload the relational operators in c plus plus